Good evening, you're joining us having a nice stroll along the River Coquit in Northumberland. We're going to have a wee cast for a sea trout tonight. Um, conditions are not brilliant. They do say sea trout run on spit, so there is a chance that there's a few around. We're going to fish one beat down here, which is some nice fly water. And then we're going to jump in the van and we're going to take a trip up to Rothbury to uh, fish another beat up there. I've got my sidekick with me as usual. As you can see, the river is extremely low. I'm going to fish this, this section first, fish all the best fly water down here. And then as darkness comes, I want to be up at Rothbury where there's a couple of deeper pools that I fancy might be good for sea trout. And there might not be much chance of a fish tonight, but it is lovely just being out. And this is the time when the sea trout are running, so, you know, there, there's always the chance. So no fish in that location, just a small trout, but to be honest, it made me really happy to catch that little trout. I've just driven through the rolling hills of Rothbury to come to this next fishing beat. And I have to say the countryside is just beautiful at the moment. It's absolutely spectacular. Everything's in full, ample, bountiful bloom. I'm hoping there's going to be a little bit more flow to the water down here. There's a heron fishing already, so that's a good sign. I'm just putting a couple of casts in this riffle. I've got a um, black pennel on, size 12, so it should take trout and salmon if there's any around. Pretty little fish. Look at that beauty. So I've driven a couple of miles upstream and I'm going to go and fish this very shallow pool. This pool interests me a lot. I saw a video from a channel called uh, Mr. Kingfisher. He's an Irish, I think he's an Irish fishing guide, but he's obviously an excellent angler and he's got one video where he's night fishing for big brown trout. Uh, basically his, he uses a switch rod and uh, I think he's using an olive woolly bugger. Basically just a streamer and it's just chucking it around in the shallows where all the, the minnows are. and basically where all the big fish come into at night time to feed. So this pool I've had my eye on for ages, but I've never been up this way to actually fish it at night. Uh, so now's my chance. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and get my night vision back. So obviously I won't tip my camera because you won't be able to see a thing. Uh, if I do find anything, I'll get the head torch on and I'll show you. Um, but yeah, before I can film it, I've got to catch it.
because it's night time and I'm scared of the dark, I'm going to have a little bit of Dutch courage. Or Irish coffee. I enjoyed my coffee, it really perked me up and it has given me the courage required to uh, tackle this pool. So I've got history here. Um, this is the pool I thought I'd actually hook my first salmon. I was fishing at dusk um, and like basically my plan was to fish into the into the darkness then call it. I was just planning to go home then next to me I heard like sploosh. So I kept totally still and then I heard another sploosh and then another one. Like, But they weren't just small splooshes, you know, they were like there were considerable noises in the water. And I thought it's definitely worth hanging around. So I stuck a sea trout fly on because I had decided in my head that they were that it was a pot of sea trout. Um, and I thought some of them would be big ones. So I'm casting this um, this sea trout fly and about, I don't know, four or five casts into it. I, I made a really nice cast just over um, where there had been a boil in the water previously. So I was cover I covered it lovely. It just like, it went right over. It was moving at a nice speed. You could tell the fly was at the right depth. And then towards my fly from about maybe 10 or 15 feet away, I saw this bow wave just like torpedoing straight for my fly. And my, honestly, my heart was just like, it, it stopped. And I was like, hang on, come on. Rem <laughs> don't blow this, because I was thinking, this is my one chance at last. And bearing in mind, I've been trying to catch a salmon for bloody ages. So anyway, this torpedo is just going straight for my fly. And I'm thinking, right, this is the moment. Come on, remember the training. Don't strike, let it take a turn around and then lift into the fish. So I'm thinking, right, okay, I'm ready. I can do this. At the moment when my fly came within about 10 feet of me, there was an explosion from the water. And out from the depths came this feckin' otter. And it literally saw me. It, it obviously got a fright as well and it snarled at me. So standing there with this otter that just burst out of the water, snarled at me. It was quite literally the most terrifying thing ever. It makes perfect sense to fish for brown trout at night. They do come out at night and, and, and they hunt, and especially at the moment, it's been red hot. We've had the heat wave. The water, the, the river level's really low. They're not gonna be feeding during the day, so at night, they're gonna come into the shallows and it's gonna be a free-for-all for, for all these minnows that live here. I've got a great big disgusting looking uh, mara blue black and white streamer pattern. I don't know what size it is, it's a big, hairy thing. So I'm hoping that might do the job. So far I've managed to wade into the middle of this sort of gravelly, gravelly shallow pool. And I'm getting comfortable with the ground in the beginning. Even though I'm, I've walked this pool and wrecked this pool a few times during the day, I made mental marks of where things were and how things worked. When it's dark, you don't really trust that. Because to be fair, you do have to have a pair of stones to go fishing on your own in the dark. But once you're in here, it does feel really cool. And there's a fish rising just literally just, I don't know, three, four feet away to my right hand side. It's risen three times. It's obviously got no fear of me. At the moment, I'm casting my streamer towards a bank of reeds. And I'm hoping that that's the place where a bigger trout might be waiting to ambush some little minnows. I'm stripping quite quickly. And I'm glad I'm using the rod I've got. So I've got an 11 foot Oracle switch rod. And it's really good for chucking out a heavy streamer. It's a seven or eight weight. I've got a six pound tibbet and about a 10 foot leader in total. Oh Jesus. I've just stuck my fly up a tree and snapped off. And then next to me, there's a flipping great big splash just happened in the water. Oh, it's quite terrifying, but it's also really exciting. And it just happens to be that when I need to tie on a new piece of tippet and a new fly. And that was a big fish, man. That was, it could have been a salmon or it could have been a sea trout, but whatever it was, a massive. <laughs> So I've, um, I've been fishing away for probably a couple of hours, maybe more actually. Uh, and I did notice all these things flying around me and I guess, I guess it was bats. There it is, it's bats, look. I've turned the light on because I've, like I said, I've given up now. That big fish did rise a couple more times just over there, just where I'm pointing the light now. It was a considerable fish and it was quite scary to be honest. So I guess it was feeding on insects, um, same as the bats, so there's still obviously insects hatching off. So up that end of the pool, I got up to my waist and at that point I started to feel like a little bit, a little bit trepidatious. Oh, there you go, look what was that. So you can see the splash marks where it rose, I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was a sea trout or a salmon or what. It might have just been a big brownie. Obviously not too put off by the light. So there we are, I've made it back alive from my first real fishing in the dark experience. 
I didn't catch any fish, but I tell you what it was, it was an interesting experience and it was pretty cool to be out there with that big fish rising right next to me. The streamer thing didn't seem to work at all. I got no interest in, in any of the streamer style flies that I chucked out there. Um, so I think I'm gonna go and do a little bit of research and maybe, I guess the, the fish were feeding on dries. I think that was a brown trout, that big one that was rising because of its location, it was tucked right up in the bank. Um, next to where a little burn was, was running in, into the main river. That's, seems like a pretty classic big brown trout lie. Alright, well, good night. That's the end of this one. We'll see you in the next video. Who knows what we'll be getting up to next. If you are enjoying these videos, give them a little like and a subscribe. But it seems that I'm picking up a couple of subscribers around the world, so that's, that's nice to know. So uh, hello to all of you guys. Um, thanks for the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Who knows what it'll be.